Uh, hello and welcome again. In this video, we will talk about another method of modular exponentiation, uh, something that I mentioned in the previous video. Um, so this method of modular exponentiation is called right-to-left binary method. It is also based on the idea that we want to represent the exponent into the binary form. And with that binary form, we will uh, get to know how to do the multiplications that are required to get to the answer. So as I said here, this method also depends on the binary representation of the exponent. So what we always want here is we want to compute x to the n modulo n efficiently, meaning that we want to perform as little operations as possible. And so as I mentioned, this depends also on on the uh, binary representation of the exponent. So assuming here that m is my exponent and it has this binary representation with the h's here at zeros and ones, and the h zero is always a one because if it is not, you just ignore it. Now this next line that I have here is just when you express this as the binary representation, what basically means is you have a zero and one, two to the t power, plus h1 to the t minus 1 and so on and so forth. Remember when you have for example 1 1 1 that 1 represent the coefficients of the powers of 2 that you have to put there. So basically this line of that is here is just saying what this says over here. And of course h0 is 1 and the other ones are zeros or 1's so they could be 0 or 1. Now with that idea in mind so let's look at this m here which is what I'm about to compute x to the n modulo n. So let's look at that. So we're going to use a little bit of algebra here, so law of laws of exponents, which are also true when you take the modulus. Now let's look at that. So let's say I want to compute x to the n modulo n, and all this algorithm is going to be based on this computation. Okay, so let's see. So m here is, of course, this uh, line that is over here. So I'm going to replace this m by this line, so I get this part that you see right there. So just the, this... Uh, representation here and of course modulo n. Now here on this part which is the exponent I have an addition. Uh, adding exponents is the same as multiplying when you multiply the basis. So if you look at this line here this one is just the law of exponents. x to the h0 2 to the t times x to the h1 2 to the t minus 1 because they have the same base you just add the exponent and that extends to the whole thing here. So basically this Addition in the exponent here uh, becomes a multiplication when you write down all these bases. So that's basically what's happening there. So it's just a little bit of algebra. Okay, now, and I'll get to the point in a second. Now, every power that you see of x here, so I have one power of x, another power of x, and another power of x. I'm going to do this operation here, which is also a law of exponents. I can write down x to the h0, 2 to the t, is exactly the same as x to the 2t all raised to the h0 power because by laws of exponents when you take two powers at the same time you just multiply the exponents which is basically what I have over here. Same idea applies for this one so this one is going to be written in this way and so on after the, until the last one and this one is going to be written in this way which is this h to the t here and this is all modulo n of course. Now as you can see here, these h's are all zeros and ones. Now, when one of them is a zero, so if, suppose let's say, for example, the h1 is zero. If h1 is zero, what's going to happen here is basically is that's going to turn that into a one. This whole thing power will be one because if this is zero. This whole number will be to the zero power, and any number to the zero power, as long as the base is not zero, then it will be one. So basically when the representation of when this h h's are ones is just multiplied by one which basically we don't have to count those. So this is what I mean by that. So if h h to the i is zero, some of these are zero, some of these exponents, we don't need to consider into the product because if it is a one, if you multiply one by one, you don't do basically anything. So the only thing that actually is uh, cutting any weight in this multiplication is the h's that have ones there. So basically the ones of the binary representation of my exponent. As you can see here, just more explicitly here, x to the 2 to the r h i, if h i is zero, it will just give me one. So in this product, we only consider the ones that have ones. 
So uh, I'm gonna give you now the pseudo code. Uh, the pseudo code that is here is basically capturing this idea. So the idea that whenever you have in the binary representation is zero, that uh, the weight of that in the multiplication is basically nothing because you just multiply by one. So the pseudo code is like this. So as input, of course, we're gonna have a base element, which I'm gonna call the base, the exponent, I'm gonna call the exponent, and the modulus, which I'm gonna call that modulus. Remember when you are programming, it's also a, usually a good idea to give meaningful names to the variables so you remember what the program does. So it's easier to read, basically. And the output, of course, is gonna be the base raised to the exponent and then modulo, whatever the modulus is in this case. Now, I'm gonna assume here that the modulus is positive all the time. So, okay, so if it's positive, one possibility could be that the modulus is one. Now, if the modulus is one, division by one gives uh, leaves no remainder, so basically this is gonna give me the remainder zero, so return zero. So basically just a stream case there. You just have to put it there. So I'm gonna have a, a, a variable called answer, which is one, and this answer is gonna hold the product, so because it's gonna hold product, it's gonna be initialized at one. And the base here, I'm gonna reduce it right away because this base could be large, so I wanna do the multiplication as small as possible. So when I do this, if the base is large and I have the modulus, this could reduce uh, the basis of less computation, basically. And we're gonna do this uh, while loop. Now this while loop that is here, uh, so in this while loop, I'm just gonna show the whole thing here. So we're gonna do it as the exponent is positive. Now, if the exponent modulo two is equal to one, basically what that is saying is, if you have a one and you binary representation, you're gonna do the computations. You're gonna take the answer, multiply it by the base, and then take modulo the modulus. It's always a good idea to take the modulus because it reduces the number of uh, computation. And then you, of course, you end the if here. Now this line of code here, basically what it's doing is reducing, reading, this is reading the binary representation of the exponent right to left. So that's basically, when the exponent modulo two is equal to one, what that means is I have a one at the end. So the right, the rightmost, uh, position of my binary representation of the exponent is a one. So in that case, I'm gonna multiply it, as you mentioned earlier. If it is a zero, you don't multiply it. And this exp this here is updating the exponent. So basically what this line of code is doing here is I start at the last position to my right of the exponent. If it is a one, I multiply it. If it is a zero, I don't do anything. And this moves uh, to the left. So from right to left, that's basically what this is doing here. And this is the floor function. Now, if you want to implement this in Java, it's okay just to do the division because it will be the same because it's actually just uh, um, positive numbers. And of course, you have to update the axis. So this, this line of code here, basically what is that doing is just, let me go, scroll up here, is taking into consideration this uh, x to the 2 to the t there. Now again, I'm going a little bit uh, faster on this one because the idea of this is just give you another another way to do modular exponentiation. So I, I don't want to spend too much time on, on this algorithm because we already have a good one, which is the square and multiply algorithm. All right. So one question is this: So how fast is the square and multiply algorithm? Now answering this question. Uh, might not be easy. So the approach I'm gonna take is actually how much time it takes for the algorithm to do a computation, and in a more particular case, how much time it takes doing it with Java, and of course doing it with the implementation of Java that we discussed, and also doing it with my machine. So it has a lot of variables here, and you have to take into consideration that. So to answer that question, how fast is the square multiply algorithm? Remember the one that we just explained is just the right to left uh, model exponentiation method. So for that, what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna take a base, which is this big number that is here. You can all agree that's not a small number, uh, at least for these computations. Then the exponent is gonna be this number right here, which is another quite large number. And I'm gonna take this modulus. So what I'm gonna do is the following thing. I'm gonna take the uh, square multiply algorithm and so I wrote that in Java, and I'm gonna let uh, the program run 200 times, 
and I'm gonna measure the times it takes every time uh, for the algorithm to compute uh, this modular exponentiation and I will give you some of the results here. So let's look at it. So as I said, I'm gonna run the square root multiplier algorithm 200 times and it turns out that with this information that I have here, which is of course large numbers, at least for computers right now, um, so it takes a little bit about this time, 0 0.0115433 seconds, which is, of course, relatively fast. It doesn't take that much time considering the, the magnitude of these numbers. Now, this is the histogram of that. So basically what I'm showing you here is how many times the, the, uh, the algorithm took this time here, about probably 35 times and so on. So this is the average of that algorithm. Now, I wanted to compare it to the other one. So the other algorithm, I did the same thing. So I implemented that algorithm in Java. I run it 200 times using, again, the same numbers that I have here. And I also got some kind of average of that over here. So, OK, one thing that I didn't mention I think is important. I'm going to scroll all the way up here. As you can see here for this algorithm, I don't. the algorithm does not call for the binary representation of the exponent. Remember for the other square multiplier algorithm, we had to actually do the binary representation. Now, it looks like this might be faster. I thought it that way before I actually did the experimentation. It turns out that the square multiplier algorithm is actually a little bit faster some of the time. And I'll show you here the results. So that's the histogram I'll just show you. The right to left binary method using the same numbers and the 200 times gives this average here, 0 0.011568, which is of course a little bit bigger than this average here. So in average, the square multiplier algorithm is a little bit better than the right to left method. Again, this is with the implementation I have and with this couple, of, uh, with these numbers that I just took. And this, this is the best way, the best way to tell that the two algorithm one is faster than the other, I don't know, maybe. But that's just to give you an example of how these algorithms work. And so this is the histogram again, just for information. This is a little bit more distributed, more than the other one. So it turns out that in all the runs, in the 200 runs that I have, the square multiplier algorithm is, is faster 55.5% of the time, and the right to left is faster 44.5% percent of the time. Sometimes the square multiplier algorithm is, is faster, sometimes the other one is faster. Um, it probably depends on the amount of memory that Java program is using, um, many other factors of the computer, uh, who knows. And so in average, I think my, we might say that this is the square multiplier algorithm is a little bit faster. Now, in I wanted to do the, the whole comparison in this video, but uh, because it's getting a little bit longer, I'm going to do another video of the comparison with random numbers. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare these two algorithms again, the square multiply algorithm and the right to left modal exponentiation. Both of them, of course, use the binary representation of the modulus, compare them again with randomly generated numbers and see what the difference is here. So, so far, it seems like the square multiplier algorithm is a little bit faster, at least in average, looks like that way. Of course, again, take into consideration that this is all with the information I'm giving you now, and it's with my machine, and it's with my implementation of Java. Maybe uh, there's some other implementations, or maybe I didn't implement it this right to left as better as the, that one. There are many variables here that you have to take into consideration, so you don't take this as I really have to pick it on a stone. So this is just with my my setup here. So in the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the comparison when we randomly generate the base, the exponent, and the modulus and see how those two algorithms compare, compare to each other. So I will see you in the next video.